good afternoon students today we are going to discuss about and stability analysis of control system so what do you mean by stability and then what do you mean by stability analysis of a control system let's see that stability means the analysis of a system whether the system is stable or not or a process of finding out a system is stable or not is we can call it as a stability of a system so stability analysis means how efficiently the system going to reach the steady state response by passing through the transient response is called as stability analysis of a system if i want to say the system is a stable system then uh, it must be obeys the bounded input bounded output rules bounded input bounded output means if i apply a bounded input it must produce a bounded output here then if we are applying zero input means the input is zero the output must be a zero in case of bounded input bounded output uh, stability analysis if we are applying bound unbounded input then it must be a unbounded output so this is about stability analysis of a system let's see what is the concept of stability so in case of here what we are doing we are trying to consider the one ex example so if i consider a container if i place one ball inside the container what i do i try to apply a force in order to take out that ball from a container every time if i apply a force on the ball it tries to come out from the container but it keep on oscillating and again it settle down at a bottom of a container so this type of a system what we can call it as stable system then in the next example what i do i try to consider a container which has a container has a tip um, means short tip so if i try to place the ball or a circular object on that tip of a container it try it falls down so this type of a system what we can call unstable system and again in the third case what i'll do again i'll try to consider a container and place a circular object i'll apply a force if the force is applied force is less than critical force then uh, this, uh, the object will settle down in the uh, at the bottom only then if i apply a fo applied force which is greater than critical force then we can take out the object from the container so this type of system what we can call we can call it as critically stable system or a marginally stable system or conditionally stable system we can also call so the best example for this marginally stable is pendulum which is neither uh, uh, neither uh, oscillating uh, it keep on oscillating neither constant nor uh, uh, exist neither constant and uh, it keep on oscillating right so it won't constant and the response uh, this type of system we can call it as unstable sorry marginally stable system or a conditionally stable system so by using this concept we can say that stable system if i want to say the system is stable if the natural response approaches to zero as a time approaches to infinity then if i want to say the system is unstable system the natural response grows without bound as a time approaches infinity then marginally stable means if the natural response neither decays nor grows but remains constant or oscillates as time approaches infinity so these are all three types of uh, systems we have that is stable unstable then marginally stable system so let's see how the roots are look like for the stable system if i consider a stable system see here this is a location of poles for a stable system this is these uh, poles are uh, real and negative these poles are complex conjugate poles so for these poles this is a response so this response is a exponential response which is a, which reaches a steady state here and for this complex conjugate pole we have oscillatory nature response and again it reaches a steady state here also so this is a stable system location of poles and response of a particular poles the next one is unstable system in this unstable system what we have we have a pole in a right of of the s plane and for this pole we have the nature of a response is increasing exponentially it won't reach a steady state it won't settle down at a steady state and if i have a pole that is complex conjugate pole in a right of of the s plane then then uh, nature of our response of this type of uh, poles is uh, keep on oscillating so it won't reach a steady state again so this uh, is a form of unstable system this is a poles location for a unstable system 
Then next one we have that is marginally stable system. We can also call this one as a special cases. What is a special case means? So we already discussed uh, if I have a stable system means the roots must be lie in a right half of this plane and if I have an unstable system means the roots must be lie in right off of the s plane so what happens if the root which is present at a origin so again if i have a root at origin means it almost which is near to the right of the s plane means we can also call this one as a unstable system mathematically but if i want to say that particular system as a unstable uh, or a marginally stable system means what we need to do in that in the transfer function we need to avoid the poles which are present at origin we need to avoid to use that poles then see here if the poles are present on a j omega axis non repeated poles on a j omega axis then it produces a constant amplitude on frequency oscillation so this type of system we can call it as marginally stable system what happens if the poles are repeated poles on a j omega axis if the poles are repeated poles on the j omega axis then the system response will keep on response amplitude will keep on increasing it won't reach a steady state so this type of system we can call it as marginally stable system and it obeys some condition we can also call this system as a conditionally stable system then see here this is a stability region if I have a root in a left half of the s plane, then we can call that particular system as completely stable system. If we have any one root which is present in a right half of the s plane, then we can call that on that system as an unstable system. If I have a root on a j omega axis that is non repeated root on a j omega axis, we can call that one as marginally stable system or a conditionally stable system. If we have repeated roots on a j omega axis, then we can call this one as a repeated. Uh, then we can call this one as a ma sorry, unstable system. If we have the repeated roots on a omega axis, we can call that one as unstable system. Next, what we have, how to find out stability of a system by using root or width criteria. Before discussing about that, we have a next concept is relative stability. What is this relative stability it means? So we are trying to compare this uh, system with one another. So if one system has a more settling time means or uh, if another one system as compared to this system uh, settling time is less means we can call that particular uh, the system which has a less settling time then we can call that system as a more stable or a relatively more stable system. In case of here, what we are doing, we are trying to consider the pole which is present in a left half of the S plane and we will try to compare these two poles settling time so the p1 which is near to j omega axis so it will take more settling time compared to the p2 so p2 which is relatively stable compared to p1 because the settling time of p2 which is less than p1 so this is a response of this poles and if I have a complex pose in the left of this plane again alpha 1 and alpha 2 alpha 1 has a more settling time compared to the alpha 2 and again alpha 2 is more relatively stable compared to the alpha, alpha 1 because the settling time of alpha 2 which is less than settling time from alpha 1. So if I have the pole which is at origin or on j omega axis then it will take more time in order to settle down. So that type of uh, system is uh, uh, less stable compared to this p1 then. So what it shows as the poles are a roots which is uh, moving away from the j omega axis then the relative stability is improved. So the relative stability will improve when the roots are away from the j omega axis which is near to the j omega axis means the stability relative stability will goes on decreasing. Then next what we have. Uh, how to find out our uh, stability means by using the root Hurwitz criteria stability criteria we can find out the stability of a system so let's see what is root Hurwitz uh, criteria what are all the necessary condition we need to use in order to find out whether the system is stable or not by using RH criteria we can also call this one as RH criteria or roots uh, root array 
and see how here we are trying to consider the transfer function that is c of s divided by r of s we all know that what do you mean by transfer function transfer function is uh, laplace transform of output to the laplace transform of input and see how this is a numerator polynomial and this one is a denominator polynomial numerator polynomial always gives a zeros of a transfer function and denominator polynomial always gives a poles of a transfer function so here b of s represent numerator polynomial f of s represent denominator polynomial here then the characteristic equation of a nth order continuous system can be written as f of s which is equal to a naught into s power n plus a one into s power n minus one plus a two into s power n minus two plus till a n which is equal to zero so the characteristic equation means it is a denominator polynomial of a transfer function if i equate it to zero it becomes characteristic equation and the highest order of the s power or s in a characteristic equation gives order of the system here next and see how in order to define the root uh, define the whether the system is stable or not we are trying to form root stable how to form a root stable here by using a characteristic equation we are trying to form a root stable here so what is the highest power here power of s that is s power n then the least power is s power 0 it must be in descending order s power n to s power 0 then we are trying to consider the coefficient of s here so, so for example s power n is the highest order of the highest order of the s oh sorry characteristic equation then the coefficient of s here then the coefficient of s here that is a n then alternative power of s we need to consider here yeah, next one is a n minus 2 next one is a n minus 4 and again s power n minus 1 means a n minus 1 a n minus 3 a n minus 5 here so it will continue still uh, sorry by using a characteristic equation we can form only a two rows uh, here so in order to find out next row element what we need to do uh, here we are consider b1 b2 b3 c1 c2 c3 so how to find out a b1 here so in order to find out b1 we need to consider first row and second row so in the second row the first element will be a reference one we'll try to multiply it with a n minus 2 minus a n into a n minus 3 that must be divided by a n minus 1 so this is about b1 so how to find out a b2 now b2 again this is a reference one a n minus 1 that must be multiplied with a n minus 4 into sorry minus a n into a n minus 5 that is divided by a n minus 5 this is how we can find out b2 so we can also find out b3 how we can find out again this is a reference one so if i have a coefficient of s here that is a n minus 6 here it must be a n minus 7 so if i multiply with this one a n minus 1 into a n minus 6 minus a n into a n minus 7 that must be divided by a n minus 1 yeah. so that's how we can calculate a b3 here next let's see how to find out a c1 so if i want to find out a fourth row element here you need to consider second row and a third row here by considering a second and third row by considering b1 as a reference one b1 should be multiplied with a n minus 3 subtracted by b2 into a n minus 1 that must be divided by b1 so that's how we can calculate a c1 here then c2 must be b1 into a n minus 5 minus a n minus 1 into b3 that must be divided by b1 so this is how calculated a c2 here so how to calculate a c3 next so it must be a n minus 7 it must be a b4 right b1 into a n minus 7 minus a n minus 1 into b4 that must be divided by b1 so this is how we will complete a root array next what are all the necessary conditions we need to use in order to find out whether the system is stable or not in our rh criteria so all the terms in a first column of a root array means see how all the columns of all the terms of a first column of a root array must have a same sign there should not be any sign change in a first column so that is a first necessary condition then there should not be no missing term in a given characteristic equation if any missing term means it is an unstable system and all variable should be of same sign all variable means all the coefficient of highest powers must be a same must have a same sign so see here in this example we have 3 into s power 4 plus 4 into s cube plus 5 s plus 1 so here we have s power 2 is missing here so s power 2 is missing means we can 
say this one this is an unstable system so in case of here in the second one phi is q minus 3 is square plus phi is plus 1 which is equal to 0 means again see how he, the coefficient of s cube is positive s is positive and s power 0 is also positive but what about s square which is uh, which has negative coefficient right so this is uh, by seeing this one we can say this one this is a unstable system next one what we have if I consider the first column of a root array, in a first column there should not be any sign change in order to say the given system is a stable system. If there is a sign change means which indicates that the number of poles which is present in a right of, of the s-plane, how many poles are present in a right of, of the s-plane which indicated by the sign changes in first column of a root array. Then next what we have, we will try to consider the example for a RH criteria. They are given the closed loop control system. So you need to find out what is the transfer function of this closed loop control system which has a forward path transfer function as a g of s which is equal to 1 divided by s cube plus s square plus 2s plus 23 and the feedback one is h of s that is a the feed h of s value is 1 here that is unity feedback they are given. You need to find out what is the total transfer function of this control system. So T of S means which is a transfer function. The transfer function is Y of S by R of S here. So how to find out the transfer function for this closed loop control system is G of S divided by 1 plus G of S into H of S, right? Where G of S is 1 divided by S cube plus S square plus 2S plus 23 divided by 1 plus 1 divided by S cube plus S square plus 2S plus 23 into 1. So if I take a LCM, it becomes the numerator s cube plus s square plus 2s plus 23 and denominator 1 would get answer each other. The remaining one will be 1 divided by s cube plus s square plus 20s, 2s plus 23 plus 1. So it becomes 1 divided by s cube plus s square plus 2s plus 24. Once we find out a transfer function of a given system, what is the characteristic equation of a transfer function? from this. So this is a characteristic equation of a given system that is s cube plus s square plus 2s plus 24. So once we know the characteristic equation try to form the root array by using this. So how to find out a root array? The highest power of s here is a 3. So first the column wise s cube s square s power 1 it is s power 0. So form the Oh, sorry, find out the elements of first row, second row by using this characteristic equation. Is power of s is 3 here. The coefficient of this s cube, odd power of s is 1 here. Then next, alternative odd power of s you need to consider. Coefficient of alternative odd power of s. The first one is 1, the next one is 2. 1, 2 has been completed. The first row element has been completed. Then the second row element. So again, even power of s you need to consider. Even power of s coefficient. That is s square means power, uh, sorry, coefficient is 1. Then 24 into s power 0. s power 0 coefficient is 24 now. The two row has been completed now. You need to find out what is the third row element now. Third row element can be calculated by, by considering this one as a reference one. 1 into 2 minus 1 into 24 divided by 1. So we will get 2 minus 24 divided by 1. It becomes minus 22. The next one maybe you can leave this place as a vacant or you can write it as a 0 here. No problem. Then next the last row element that is minus 22 into 24 minus 1 into 0 will get 0 divided by minus 22 minus 22 minus 22 gets cancelled each other the remaining one will be a 24 next you need to check whether it's a stable or unstable if you want to say the system is stable means in the first column of a root array there should not be any sign change if you have a sign change means which indicates that the number of roots which is present in a right of, of the s plane so see how if I consider the first row and second row, if I come from first row to second row, there is no sign change in the first column of a root array. First row to second row. Here also we have positive. Here also we have positive. If I come to the second to third, here we have positive. Here we have negative. So means there is a sign change. If I come to the third to fourth, and again here we have negative, here we have positive means there is a sign change again. So there are two sign changes are present in the given system, given in a root array. If there is two sign changes means which indicates that there are two roots which are present in a right of, of the S plane. There are two roots which are present in right of, of the S plane. Then the system is completely unstable system. 
नेक्स्ट देर आर स्पेशल केसेस आर प्रेजेंट इन अ रूट्स क्राइटेरिया आर अ रूथ हरे आर अ आर इन रूथ हरविट्स क्राइटेरिया देर आर टू स्पेशल केसेस द फर्स्ट स्पेशल केसेस रूथ टेबल एज जीरो ओनली इन द फर्स्ट कॉलम and remaining elements must be a non zero any one element must be a non zero and see how here in the third row first element is zero here so means if i have a zero means is it possible to find out next row element here no it's not possible to find out a next row element see here zero into four minus three into one divided by zero means will get infinity if it's not possible to go further again so in order to overcome this what we'll do we'll try to replace the zero by a small positive number that is called epsilon so if i replace it by epsilon means we can by using that epsilon we can complete a root array and by taking a epsilon value tends to zero we can find out whether any sign changes are present in the first column of a root array or not and the second special case of a root array is root table as an entire row that consists of a zeros root table as an entire row that consists of a zero and see here in this case all the element of the third row is zero all the elements are zero means again it's not possible to go further zero into four will get zero three into zero zero so divided by zero means zero by zero zero by zero means undefined so we can't go further in order to overcome this problem we have some necessary conditions here that is procedure here to eliminate this difficulty the first thing is if i have a zero in all the zero elements in root elements in order to overcome that you need to form a auxiliary equation form an equation by using a coefficient of a row which is above the row is zero so this is zero by using above row of this zero we can form a equation called as auxiliary equation so this is called auxiliary equation which is represented by e of s so see how above this row means what is the power of s here s power 4 so always it represent this is a coefficient of s power 4 right so d into s power 4 then the next element is alternative even power of s coefficient here we have that is e into s square we have f into s power 0 so this is a auxiliary equation so how to replace this zero then so in order to replace this zero th element by considering the derivative of a auxiliary equation so differentiate this auxiliary equation with respect to s so you'll get a uh, differentiated equation of auxiliary equation that is here we have d into s power 4 if i differentiate this one with respect to s we'll get 4d s cube plus 2e s plus 0 so this is a uh, derivative of a auxiliary equation so we can replace this zero by coefficient of this derivative uh, coefficient of s of derivative equation so see here 4d 2e 0 and again we we can solve uh, sorry we can find out an next row element by considering fourth uh, sorry second and third row uh, that is 4d into e minus d into 2e divided by 4d and the next element is 4d into f Minus d into zero divided by four d. Four d four d gets cancelled. The remaining one will be yes. This way we can complete the array in terms of coefficients. Then next one. What is the importance of auxiliary equation then? So if we are finding out auxiliary equation means the importance is it almost consists of dominant roots of a given characteristic equation. For example, here the is power of s is pi red. So the auxiliary equation is power is four means which indicates that there are four dominant roots of a characteristic equation which is present in auxiliary equation. This is one of the importance of a uh, auxiliary equation. Then. how the roots of auxiliary equation look like see here the auxiliary equation always which is a pair that is plus or minus so the first root combination may be the roots are present one root which is present in left of this plane another one must be a right of this plane another one combination is uh, upper uh, uh, sorry which is present on the j omega axis plus or minus again and again the uh, four pair of roots which is present on no uh, j omega axis those are non repeated roots so another one pair is repeated roots on a j omega axis so this is how auxiliary equation roots are look like 
next one what we have let's see the example of a special case one so they are given a characteristic equation of our closed loop transfer function so that is q of s which is equal to s power 5 plus 2 s power 4 plus 2 s q plus 4 s square plus 11 s plus 10 so first what we need to do we need to form a root array form a root array so the highest power of s is 5 so s power 5 next it must be s power 4 3 2 1 0 then by using this characteristic equation we can form a two row of this root array the highest power s power 5 coefficient is 1 alternative odd power s coefficients we need to consider in order to form a first row element so 1 2 then it must be 11 next s power 4 the coefficient of s power 4 is 2 then the coefficient uh, of uh, s square is 4 then coefficient of s power 0 is 10 then next try to find out the third row element here 2 into 2 4 minus 4 divided by 2 will get 0 then 2 into 11 22 minus 10 divided by 2 will get 6 so next uh, try to complete an next row element here by multiplying it by epsilon into 4 sorry so it's not possible to go further which indicates that special case 1 so if we have a special case 1 means it must be replaced by a small positive number called epsilon so try to multiply it with epsilon into 4 minus 6 into 2 12 divided by epsilon so next epsilon into 10 10 epsilon divided by epsilon 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 gets cancelled the remaining one will be a 10 here next one the next row element you can find out here so it must be comes here uh, next how to complete sorry how to find out whether this system is stable or unstable in order to find out this one try to substitute the epsilon value tends to zero if i substitute epsilon value tends to zero for this one four into zero will get zero minus 12 divided by zero means it will get minus infinity so means one two epsilon if i consider the first column of a root three one two epsilon it becomes minus infinity six ten so try to check whether any sign changes are present or not 1 to 2 there is no sign change 2 to epsilon there is a, there is no sign change again 3 epsilon to next one that is minus infinity there is a one sign change minus infinity to 6 again there is another one sign change there are totally two sign changes are present and 6 to 10 there is no sign change which indicates that there are two roots which are present in the right of, of the plane then the system is completely unstable system then next let's see the example for a special case 2 now so in the special case 2 they are given determine the number of right of uh, plane poles in the closed loop transfer function try to determine the number of right of of the s plane poles in the closed loop transfer function t of s which is equal to 10 divided by s power 5 plus 7 into s power 4 plus 6 into s cube plus 42 s square plus 8 s plus 56 so what is the first uh, First, what we need to do, we need to find out which one is a characteristic equation here, which is a denominator function or polynomial is a characteristic equation of a given transfer function of a closed loop system. That is s power 5 plus s 7 s power 4 plus 6 s cube plus 42 s square plus 8 s plus 56 is a characteristic equation of a given closed loop transfer function. So first what we need to do, we need to form a root array here. Highest power of s is Five. s power 5 s power 4 s power 3 s power 1 s power 0 here so the coefficient of s power 5 is 1 alternative odd power of s coefficient we need to consider here the next s power 3 coefficient is 6 next one is 8 next s power 4 coefficient is 7 s power 2 coefficient is 42 then it must be a 56 next try to find out the next row element here 7 into 6 42 42 minus 42 divided by 7 will get 0. 7 into 8, 56 minus 56 divided by 7, 18 will get 0. So it becomes 0 row, row of 0. Then this is a special case 2, which indicates that which is a special case 2. So how to overcome from this one? No, by writing an auxiliary equation. What is the auxiliary equation here? 7 into s power 4 plus 42 into s power 2 plus 56 into s power 0. If I take a derivative for this, it becomes 28 into s cube plus 84 into s, right? So we can replace this 0 by coefficient of s cube 
is 28 and this coefficient is for 84 so it becomes a 28 84 we can also perform a division here if I take 7 as a common one 1 6 8 it becomes right so again it becomes 1 3 right so by using this we can form an extra element here that is a uh, 1 into 6 minus 1 into 3 will get uh, 3 by 1 will get 3 1 into 8 minus 0 divided by 1 will get 8 so again we can form an extra element here 3 into 3 9 minus 8 divided by 3 will get 1 by 3 then 3 into 0 0 will get so it becomes 0 then s of 0 element is 1 by 3 into 8 divided by 1 by 3 it becomes 8 so check whether any sign changes are present here there is no sign change which indicates that there are no roots which are present in a right off of the s plane the system is stable system and along with that what we need to do we need to check what are all the roots for this auxiliary equation how to find out the roots for this auxiliary equation see here here we have s power 4 4 means we don't know how to find out the roots for this so for that what i'll do i'll try to substitute in place of s square as a s so then it becomes 7 s square plus 42 s plus 56 so try to find out the roots for this by using a quadratic equation based on that roots where it locate on a s plane will can tell whether it's a marginally stable are absolutely stable or unstable also please try it by yourself this one and this is about uh, stability analysis of a control system and uh, we are discussed about stability what do you mean by stability analysis and what are all the ro roots must be present in right off of the s plane for an unstable system left off of the s plane for a stable system if you have a roots on a j omega axis non repeated roots on a j omega axis then system becomes a marginally stable system then if we have no repeated roots on a j omega axis it becomes a marginally sorry unstable system is unstable then we have discussed about root or width criteria uh, what do you mean by root or width criteria we will consider a characteristic equation we will form a root array then the necessary condition is uh, in a root array first column there is no sign change in a first column of a root array and there is no missing term in a given, given characteristic equation there is no missing power of s and there is no sign change in a variable or a given uh, oh, sorry coefficient of s uh, there is no sign change in a coefficient of s these are all the necessary sufficient condition for root or width criteria there are two special cases in a root or width criteria one is uh, s per sorry if the any one row sorry in a first column of any row uh, as zero and remaining elements are non-zero that one we can consider as a special case one if any row which contains all the elements are zero that consider as a special case two in order to overcome that we can use the auxiliary equation for a second uh, special case for a first special case we can uh, replace zero by small positive number called epsilon by using this technique we can find out whether the system is stable or unstable but 